everyone. So, I'm back after a week of being away. And I hear that Tears of the Kingdom, I meant a certain game called The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, will be coming out in, holy crap, it's almost, like, it's almost two weeks, so, I think, like, to get in the mood for Tears of the Kingdom, we're going to play a game like Tears of the Kingdom, and so, like, this game was free on Epic a while back, so I'm like, why don't I try this out? So I tried it out. So I guess we're streaming it now. Oh yeah, for some reason my A and B buttons are inverted. It's weird. Okay, th these are some really cool loading screens. <clears throat> I must admit. Shed works. Return of the Overdin. I don't know why it reminds me of Return of the Overdin. It doesn't even, it, it looks nothing like Return of the Overdin. But, I mean, okay. You saw your first pitch clock violation. What an Uko Pekka Lukanen moment. I should hunt back to camp. Yeah, I... Wow, it opened the door. Jumping. Press A to jump. The controls are inverted for some who knows what reason. Move for the wall again. Begin climbing, keep an eye on her stamina. This 
game is beautiful. Nope, we are not going to, to climb on the door. Or on the wall. We're gonna climb up the ladder. the way the color just filled. Beautiful. Hold, hold down B is great while moving around. You can only sprint whilst you have enough stamina. This game uses the words whilst a lot. <laughs> Ibex camp! Let's see what's up. I can feel JD smiling beneath her behind her mask. Just as I know she can feel the te she can feel his teeth bearing little grimace behind mine. I'm nervous and she's softly, sweetly amused. In her in her eyes, I probably have very little to worry about. You know you have worrying nothing to worry about, don't you, Sable? I know, I know. I told JD that I know, but that it hasn't quite stuck in yet. She chuckles. Oh, <laughs> I promise you, Sable, you're fine. But I do know how you are. You're gonna be nervous until you've started and then you'll act like you've been doing it your whole life. Remember the first time you rode a bike? What didn't even let me put, put you on the seat? You were so afraid. Your hands were like little claws gripping into me. I feel the memory in my fingers. But then I promised you it was gonna be all right. I told you how much I had loved riding my bike as a young woman and how wonderful the wind felt through the fabric. Suddenly, there you were. You sat down. You leaned forward and put those little grasping claws on the handles, and you were off. And I remember thinking, just watching you tear over the sand. Look at her, she can do whatever she wants. JD reaches out and places a hand on the edge of my mask. And you can, Sable. I take a breath. <sighs> I think I'm ready. I thank JD for the encouragement and tell her with a nod that I think I'm ready. I know you are. So, let's get you started. You need to talk to Hill All and Driss. Driss should already have made the arrangements for your bike, and Hillel will share something, well, let's say as useful as it is fun, hmm? I think I might suspect what JD is saying, but I stay quiet. After that, I suppose we'll see you off. I'll be back soon. Sable, don't go planning your return before you've even left. Take all the time you need. It's a big decision you're making out there. I tell her that's why I'm so eager to make it. To choose well and quickly so that I don't go da too far down the wrong path. Whatever you decide, you do so with my blessing. So don't try using me as an excuse to come home early, eh? She knows me. Now go speak with Hillal. I'll be there to see you off. And speak to Triss as well. I've told him to arrange your bike with Saizo, but you know how he is. I have something to give you. A compass to help you on your journey. The same one I used on my gliding. An artifact, you might say. I take the device in my palm. It fits naturally there, perfectly weighted and crafted. Each component slides together with incredible, satisfying precision. Thank you.
I, I I really like the style of like of narration this game has. It's like a it's kind of like a book written in the first person. Though I've told myself not to be too eager, it's all I can do not to race up to Driss. Driss is a camp manager. He's been difficult to get a hold of lately, but now I strongly suspect that he's been working on my bike in secret. Perhaps it's extra beautiful, or has some custom feature. What will its name be, I wonder? How fast will it go? Will my legs feel sore, or will I get used to it? Driss turns with a bit of a start. Sable, er, uh, hello. JD sent me to speak with you? Did she? What about? I tell him it was about something special, and then make a leading gesture, slowly, trying to be perfectly cool and confidential. But I can't do it. I'm too keen and the words fill out. I asked Driss if he might, sort of, possibly, maybe have a bike for me oh your bike he yells it like it's an idea he's just had your bike yes of course right yeah your, your bike that i was meant to uh that i prepared for you because today is your did you forget in abject horror i gently ask if he may have forgotten what what, what? i would never it obviously i have your bike by which I mean, I arranged it for you in a, well, it's some sort of a tutorial for you. A tutorial? Like I'm in some sort of video game? Yes, exactly. A learning experience. You see, Sable, before one can ride their own bike, they must prove that they can ride a bike by taking a test ride on a different bike. I think about it and find I've never heard of that part of the gliding, but Driss does seem earnest. Sort of. So instead of about worrying about your bike, I'd like you to try this bike as a test. Driss gestures to the sand cutter on his side. It's quite old and a little shabby. A tester if ever I've seen one. What's the bike's name? Driss seems scandalized. Th that's a bit personal, don't you think? Just sand cutter will do for now. Youngsters these days, always asking questions. Now, ride the bike through the ring and back. Here's some advice for you, my lung glider. Don't fall off. Don't lose your bike. When you're not running it, your hover bike will appear as a blue icon on, on your compass. too hard I just need to like make sure all the controls are correct I return to Driss who somehow manages to seem caught off guard despite knowing I was coming. Sable, congratulations. How was your first pre-glide pre ride? Any strange rattles? Unexplained hissing? Small fires? What do you mean, fires? Surely you'd notice if you were on fire. Even a little bit. Was that a possibility? Well, obviously it didn't happen, so I think we're fine. Driss is such Driss is such an idiot, I love him. Driss? Is this bike dangerous? Well He doesn't finish. Have you already been by Hilal? Am I not getting a bike? Well, you're getting the use of the sand cutter. That's something, eh? You can borrow it to run your little errands. Oh, my little errands. 
And Hillel's got something to show you. Help you out with more of that mm, mobility you're after. With my confidence in this exercise only lightly tarnished, I thank Chris very much for his help and his bike, and I depart for Hillel. <laughs> is a man of few words, and he's nothing if not consistent. <laughs> Yeet! Ah, 20 Pocos. Yes, the currency in this game will also be called Pocos. I, I don't make the rules. mask. A blank looking mask worn by all children of the dunes. Most kids customize theirs for fun, but more traditional clans frown on that sort of self-expression. <sighs> Prudes. Ibexi children top. My old Ibexi top and hood, a hand-me-down from Yara. The scratchiness reminds me of home. Ibexi trousers. Comfy sandals for exploring sandy places. Easy to get sand out of, but not the best for climbing. Compass, a device given to me by Jaddy. It helps me find my way as I explore. barrel roll. I'm not gonna ask what that is. Saima managed to contain so much chaos and verb in so small a form. Even now, there is something troublesome being dreamed up behind that mask. I know it. Ibexi Red Dye, a dye bottle for the colors of the Ibexi Red Bike. Increasingly strange questions before I make an excuse to take my leave. I 
think that's our guy. As I approach Halal, they give an enthusiastic wave. I've always appreciated Halal's verve and vigor, and on a day like this, I'm ready to match it with a touch of nerves for balance. Sable, take this. Halal hands me a small round stone. As it nestles into my palm, I feel a warmth not borrowed from Halal's hands, but emanating from within. I run my thumb over it and find it softly electric, like static on cloth. What is this? I try to sound less confused than I am, but ask Halal what this is. Oh, Sable, you can't leave without it. What I've just given you is a gliding stone. What do you feel? I tell Halal that I feel... Connectedness? Then you're doing it right. What you feel in that stone is openness. I look at the stone. It seems quite closed. Gliding stones are vessels for the perpetual. They suck up its power like little sponges and hold it there for you to channel. Right now it's empty or dormant and waiting for you to fill it up. I ask how I can do this. Take it to the temple ruins at the edge of the canyon. You'll be able to activate it there. They'll all clasp their hands twice and bobs a little. I appreciate their good mood at a time like this. Come back to me once that's done. I want to hear all about it. Whatever the opposite of a mistake is. Yeah, I I'm not making it up there.
like one one great thing about Sable. It's in the desert, so it's probably not gonna rain. And uh, we all know about. I, I think every single person who knows Breath of who ever played Breath of the Wild knows that rain is the worst. Why does that guy look like he's taking a shit? Aw, oh, damn it. His loincloth's covering his butt. <laughs> oh, those are some really cool effects here. I am loving this game so far. The stone thrums like the beat of a heart as I approach the altar. Am I afraid? Exhilarated? Or maybe it feels right. I am ready for Rohana to know me. I am ready to know myself. I feel her curiosity in this sacred place. I know I am in her sight. God, she isn't dead. Put it in your pocket. Press the quest updated with Spring Songs to show hello. Be active.
I'm pressing, uh, I'm pressing B. It's not working. I don't know what I did, but it's working now. There's the sh We're back. That was very annoying. By the way, while it was while the stream was disconnected, I I was just I, I just held held up the glide held on the glide button. It was really cool. Wish y'all could have seen it, but alas, very little of the Indonesian sick lives to not be shown. <laughs> but you know what? I'm glad I got a little moment in this game for myself. chums when planting themselves into the ground. Perfectly smooth and hard as a rock, these eggs seem to float with how light they are. There must be a good place to, to deliver these. Yeah, these these are Koroks. They're, they're literally Koroks. Y'all thought... Y'all thought your food was bad with the poor ox? Well, we're about to, we're not even beginning to scratch the surface. But on an unrelated note, I, I, I'm really happy Koroks are back in Tears of the Kingdom. It was always so, it was just always so fun to like just randomly search find these little things you have to do, and when you do it all, you just hear that really satisfying, yeah, ha, ha. Well, let's talk to Hilal and their leg. When I turn to Hilal, it's clear they know what I've just experienced. They're excited on my behalf, in a way that makes me miss them before I even left. Isn't it incredible? How does it feel? Safe. 
like a warm hug. I tell, I tell Hulal that I feel almost embraced by the perpetual, warm and safe in my own little bubble. They swoon. Oh, that's such a nice way of describing it. Hulal's mood doesn't darken, but the sight of it out holds a bit of sorrow. <sighs> Very lucky, you know. I miss it so much, that feeling. Just floating on the breeze. But I suppose it's best that it fades with age, hmm? Or else I might never have come back from my gliding. I'd just be out there heaving myself into chasms. Is that how you lost your leg? I wish we could all do it. I tell Halal I wish it was something we could keep perpetually. So do I, Sable. So do I. I know people manage to keep it up, but I don't know that I've got the time to practice as much as they do. It takes a really serious focus. Halal laughs, even if there's a bit of regret in it. <laughs> and I certainly haven't got that. Still, I suppose the gliding wouldn't mean much if it were all gains and no loss, hmm? I think about that, but to decide there's already too much loss on my, man my mind to consider it much further. I'm saying goodbye to my clan, my family, my home, my childhood. Salute the perpetual is a sacrifice for another time. You're gonna love it out there, Sable. Even when you don't. My advice? Try to have fun. There's a lot to be said about ritual and independence and all of that out there, but the world's an easier place if you put joy first. I thank Halal for their advice and for their help. Tell them that I'll miss them. It'll be over before you know it. A warning and a reassurance, all in one. I say goodbye to Hilal. Before I go, Hilal gestures towards the tower. It seems Zizo wishes to see me before I leave the clan. Jady greets me warmly. Hello, little glider. That's big glider to you! I tell JD I'm actually a big glider. She laughs. <laughs> You're right. You horror. Sable, noted adult and big glider. I'll keep it in mind. Post box. Beep. Logging in. Hello, Sable. Unread messages. Zero. Have a good day. Yeah, I, I, I'm breaking out the, the Hockatate ship voice for the post box. And you can't stop me. No one can stop me. Not even God can stop me. fun than the person in it. I approach the cartographer. Ah! Greetings, child. I saw you looking longingly at my great balloon. Quite the piece of work, isn't she? Oh, it's bigger than I thought. I tried to explain that when I first saw the balloon. I thought it was very small and somewhat far away, but now I see that it's quite large and was very far away. I fumbled through the explanation though, and the cartographer just nods without saying anything. I nod back. Well, good to meet you. And oh, I should uh, introduce myself. I am Jordan. I tell him, I'm Sable. I suppose if you come all the way to see me, it's probably a map you're after, eh, Sable? Do I need a map? I asked the cartographer if I need one. Do the stag beetles like the pigs? I have no idea, but contextually, I assume the answer is yes. If you are leading on the gliding sable, you you will definitely need a map of the ewer, at least. And I'll sell you one for only 50 cuts. To my ears, 
it's a fair price for a map, but too expensive for a free gliding glider with empty pockets. I'll tell Jordan. I tell Jordan I'll be back. I need to ask JD for some money. Fair Z Bell, child. As she looks out across the landscape, Zeki's shoulders sag a little. I wonder what she's thinking about. Something on your mind? Zeki's voice is weakly incredulous. I don't know how she's done it. That's Ilaria over there. I follow her to gaze to a little speck in the distance, which I now understand is her daughter, Ilaria. Does she need help? Zeki shakes her head. No, she's fine, and I'll get her. I'm just... She shrugs. Parenting. <laughs> I suppose I'll know more about that when I'm, old. I'm older. JD, give me money. I am broke. I tell JD that the car talked for once. 50 cuts slash half portions slash pokos. You know what? I like half portions. It's... No. Just portions would work. It, it's a very... Yes, I know I hate the Star Wars sequels, but... I think it would be a funny reference. I tell JD that the cartographer wants 50 portions for a map of the Ewer. I try to hedge the way that I speak about this as... I'm not entirely sure whether that's too much, not enough, or precisely its value. She tells me not to worry. Here's some money to get you going on your journey. Use it mostly wisely, and then a little unwisely when the mood strikes. Treat yourself! It's good to know the value of money, but you never want to be ruled by it. I thank JD effusively and head out on my way. Child. Give me the damn map! The perfectum perfection. Let us do the trading then. How many would you like to buy, Glider? One. Ah, I see I have um, nothing left for you. Uh huh. I thank Jordan for the era map and all its vast possibilities. Something about this makes it feel more real. Good luck on Z gliding, Sabu. I still remember mine. I asked how it was. Sure. I knew ever since I was a little boy that cartography was for me. But I spent a little extra time out there just to enjoy Z world. Speaking of, keep an eye on the skies, eh? Plenty of my colleagues out there, and they'll have more maps to sell you, from Hakoa to the Sodic Waste. I thank Jordan for the chip, and say goodbye. Farewell, child. Okay, fast travel. You've unlocked a piece of the map. You can navigate to the map screen in the pause menu. Once you've visited, uh... A place you can fast travel to that location using the map screen. Your hover bike will also travel with you. I want to be a carnogrammer too. Yes, it does sound like a fun job.
Jenny greets me warmly. Hello, little glider. What was your gliding like? I asked Shady about her gliding. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you when you get back. I cross my arms in protest. Pout all you want. I don't want to spoil any surprises. She lowers her voice to a whisper. But I did meet some crystal farmers once. Crystal farmers! And that's all I'll say about that. You should get going. Sorry, I had to. We're back. Some very black smoke. Got some more portions. Cizo is an outlander to the Abexi, but I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall, and think of her more as a kind of distant relation than any sort of outsider. Machinists, I'm told, are given their posts, and by their training and their code, must go to where they are needed, but Cizo has been among us when the imposter is sus! Ding, 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 ding! Da da ding! So long that it's easy to forget it's an assignment, first and foremost. As far as any of us are concerned, she's one of us. I think there's a perception among the other clans that the Abexi are quite insular, or that our designation of Abexi versus Outclanners or just some nervous othering of those who are unlike us. But in practice, such things are more the result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will travel with us and who we must leave behind. But all are welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Cizo did. Sable, how do you do, clan child? I can only think of one thing. A bit worried. Am I really getting a bike? Cizo has a throaty quality to her voice, and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. She's quite a serious person most days, and I'm always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make her chuckle. <laughs> yes, J.D. told me how excited you were. Cizo sniffs. She also told me that Jess would be coming along to get your bike together, but I think he may have... I knew it. 
What? I hadn't meant to say it out, out loud, so I tell her I was just clearing my throat. I don't begrudge Tristan's forgetfulness. When I task with so many odd demands, I might be just as scattered. And besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hoverbike parts yourself. That sounds like an adventure! I tell Cizo I like the sound of that. A little adventure before my big one. It's more meaningful than you know. To bond with one's bike before it is taken form is more privileged than labor. Here, take this. Cizo hands me something. This is a navigator. You can use it to mark waypoints on your compass. It should be useful in finding the old parts. I asked Cizo where I might start looking. Our bikes are reborn in the ruined ships, and fragments spread apart. A good start would be to ship down here, near the camp, and find another one up on that great rock, near the other side of the canyon, and another behind the old dam on the hill. Use your navigator to mark that down if you need. You need to gather a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. Do most gliders make their own bikes? I asked Izo if most gliders really make their own bikes. Only the lucky ones. I tell Cizo I'll see her soon and head off in search of the components. Together we will create something new out of the old. Atomic calibrator, atomic power supply, and control panel. Nothing of use to be found on the ship, but I noticed a blinking light flashing on the dashboard of the cockpit. <laughs> I said cockpit. Push the button, why not? A voice crackles from the machinery in front of me. It sounds like a recording, it's barely audible. Stop messing about with these buttons, you absolute idiot! Sorry, Ramen. Concentrate. I don't think I have to remind you how much work it was to get this far. We're almost there. All right, let's see if what that old maggot has told us holds up. If not, will we hella pay? I hear the sounds of mechanical adjustments being made. Three clicks, buttons being pressed, perhaps? Okay, when I push this orange thing, pull that lever hard. 
Yes, Ramen. Sound of a click and a loud grunt before a snapping sound. Oh, and Rohan, it's mass. Not that hard. You turned it out. Suddenly, the speakers are filled with static and a low rumble that gradually increases in pitch. Psh, psh. I hear the sounds of someone cheering. Yay! It worked! We're flying! More cheering. Is that the sound of someone dancing? Okay, okay. Let's focus. This thing is moving fast. We need to slow it down a bit. How do we do that, Ramen? Let me check the mechanist's notes. A long pause. The rumbling static sound that started playing when the ship took off is still increasing in pitch. Ramen? That lever, Toma, the one you just ripped out. We're going too fast. We're gonna crash. We need to try to. The recording cuts off there. So I think we learned a very important lesson, which is don't pull off the levers or else you'll die. Are you looking for a calibrator? I am immediately on guard. Saima has always been a mischief maker and taken tremendous pleasure in tormenting me. In theory, I am older, more experienced, and should be more than able to withstand it. In practice, you won't find it here. I've hidden it. You'll never find it. Never, never. She never fails to get to me. You are a horrible child. Saima laughs off of my irritation, but I'm not gonna give it her the satisfaction. I cross my arms and try to effect a change. I'll give you the calibrator. I put out my hand, proud of myself for standing tall before Simon. If you give me some beetles! That's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want. I tried to decide what's more mature to push her over to steal the calibrator or to acquiesce. But then I stiffly stifle a sigh and shake her little hand. Perhaps some of the adults in the camp know where I can find some. I could ask about catching beetles for that awful little Saima. Do you know where I can find some beetles? There's a nest of beetles just east of here. You can't just walk up to one and catch it, though. There's some, there's some seeds growing on the rocks around the nest. Drop a seed on the floor and the beetle will start eating it. They can sneak up and grab it. Just ask me another series of increasingly strange questions before I make an excuse to take my leave. Beatles now. 
Yeah. I forgot which direction was east. Or in other words, east? I thought you said west. Those are some big beetles.
know what? I'm getting all the beetles. Because I don't like them. Yeah, I I'm not gonna go over the way. One more. Yeah, I had to look it up uh, for a second. Because I really did not want to have to go all the way back to camp. Just just get another beetle. I feel embarrassingly, embarrassingly vindicated as I hand Simon the Beatles, but rather than Grove, she hands me the calibrator and begins to cry. What have I done? You're leaving! You're leaving and you'll never come back! She blows her nose and then wipes her hand on her tunic. Came back after the last lighting. Aren't you sad? You were her friend. I miss her too. There's been the letter here and there, but it is always to us rather than me. I'm not bitter, but I hope not to be like that. Please don't go! I tell Simon not to worry, and I will be back sooner than she knows, and I'm sure she pouts behind the mask. And I add that if I am not back sooner than she knows, then she will be ready for her gliding by then, and she can come bother me herself. Promise? I say yes. Good. Then I suppose I can come see you off. I thank her and say goodbye for now.
atomic power supply has been found. control panel. being that it's a dam. Please don't tell me I am about to cause a mass flood scale that that the Ibex have never even thought of. have to go catching any more beetles or small children to get this card. And our next stop is to deliver the parts to Sizo, it seems. be one of, like, this is, this game has really good graphics. Like, I, I am, like, first thing you need to know about me is, I, I am a sucker for cell shading. Like, I mean, everyone knows, like, the big one is, like, I mean, Wind Waker is one of my favorite Zelda games. Breath of the Wild has similar has like a similar aesthetic well i mean with the, the visual part
much time to get this show on the road. I return to Sizen with the parts, and it's as she waves me over that I feel a pang of sadness in my chest. When will I see her again once I'm gone? Well done, Sable. Yes, this is everything we need. Are you ready to assemble a bike of your own? Yeah, let's do this. Sizer relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she is particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily. There's a certain calm beauty that one only truly appreciates when Saizo is in her element. I wonder if it's all this way for all machinists. What you must understand, Sable, is that the co po components you acquired, they fit together. Not by chance, not by effort, but by nature. They belong to her. They have always belonged to her. All we are doing is assembling her from what she has already been. I nod, and I feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my clan, we believe that machines have names, held for ages like deep secrets, unheard by those unequipped to listen. We will find this one's name together. Lighting bike front. now. Listen. Saizo tilts her head a moment, leaning closer to... Simoon. All at once I know the hoverbike's name. Simoon. I say it in a whisper to let Saizo know. Simoon. 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 Well done, Sable. What sort of name is that? I asked Saizo what sort of name it is, and if it speaks to any particular clan or culture. If it does, then I do not know it. Perhaps you will find out on your journey. Saizo shrugs, mostly to herself. Or perhaps you won't, but I hardly think it matters. You are bonded all the same. I tell Simoon that I am eager to know her better, and Saizo looks quite proudly at the both of us. You're ready then for the gliding. May all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. An odd blessing, perhaps, but Saizo is prone to such things that I can read in her tone that it was meant quite sweetly. You must learn to listen to Simon. Care for her. Seek out my fellow machinists on your travels, Sable. They will treat you the teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, and here, take this. The machinist badge. You'll meet plenty of my ilk on your gliding. Show them your worth and they'll give you more badges. I think Saizo twice for good measure and give a bow. I am ready. Now let's get to JD. Complete our final ceremony. And we'll end the stream there. I return to Jady with the new lightness. It makes the weight of my departure feel heavier still. It's a strange day. Sable, is that a badge you've got there? Sizo gave it to me. I tell Jady that Sizo gave me the badge. You must have earned it. Well done. I give a bow of thanks. Well, Sable. If you keep this up, you'll be headed for the mass caster in no time. 
I try to think about going to a mass caster, but it seems impossibly far away. Imagine choosing what I want to be? Imagine choosing what I want to be forever? I know what you're thinking, but don't worry about it. You'll get plenty of badges when you're out there, and once you've got three alike, you can trade it in for that mask. Don't feel like your first mask is your final choice. The gliding is all about freedom and exploration. I suggest you claim as many masks as you wish. Only at your final ceremony will you be asked to choose one. How will I choose one? We'll have to feel it out, but when you know, you'll know. Now. The tone of her now puts the butterflies back in my stomach. With all of this done, there's only one thing left. It's time then, isn't it? Time to walk through the face door at the Temple of Rohana. Bill, you'll assemble your gliding mask and go. There are things I wish to convey to Jada here. Depths of love and gratitude and fear and worry and hope. And though I find myself unable to speak of any of it in words, I know she understands. Before you leave, child, I made you these. They are dyed with the traditional Ibexi maroon, and I hope provide you great comfort out in the desert. When you leave today, you will no longer be Sable, clan child of the Abexi. You will simply you will simply be Sable, and the rest will come. But no matter what you are, no matter where your journey takes to, I will always know you. I will always love you. And I will see you again. I don't know where my journey will end, but I know where it must begin. And I am ready. time on the sand cutter. Good measure. back here. Archer. <laughs> Priest of 
first part of the mask. And now it's the weird shitting guy. volleyball player. I guess this is our mask. A Bexy mask. A mask made, worn by those in the sand sea made of bone. The ones particular to the Abexi are made from the skull of a mountain goat. I can't jump up things like that. So, if I haven't said it before, which I have, I'm going to say it again. God damn, this game is beautiful. I can't believe I got it for the low price of zero dollars and zero cents. Thank you, Epic Games. Like, I mean, I also got Yogu for free. Logging in. Hello, Sable. JD's voice echoes strangely through the machine, yet still it warms me. Well, Sable, this is it. 
By the time you hear this, we will have gone. The gliding is a journey that must begin alone. There is a certain nuance lost in transmission, and for that I am grateful. It would be far too much to hear the cracks in her voice and not run weebly into her arms to stay forever. I am ready. So I close my eyes and listen. But don't go by yourself. You are not without friends. You are not without family. You are not without love. These things you will always carry with you as you do your mask. And I know I'm not supposed to do this, but if I were you, I might go and see Utari. There's a machinist at Burnt Oak Station and among Saizo's closest friends. Utari's a good contact to have on one's gliding, and a fine way to get another machinist badge if you're so inclined. Only a suggestion, though. As for us, I'll send another message once we return to the Ewer, so keep an eye on the post boxes. And try not to forget us. It takes a long breath and I forget to touch things as easy as breathing could ever exist. The world is waiting for you. Good luck. Okay. good chunk there's i'm going to end the stream there because it's late i'm going to set up a raid no one's stream chia Someone, I'm gonna raid an amazing mirror streamer. So, I'll be back on Friday. I hope you all enjoyed. See you later, alligators. <laughs>